Hi everybody, Patrick here from PaintballProps.com, EngineeringShock.com, and ElectronicLessons.com. This is the Mine Cutter version 2. Um, the Mine Cutter is a paintball prop. It can be used in Airsoft, Milsim, uh, and laser tag games as well. Now, it might look from this angle like it's just a bunch of wires, but what this is, is it's a, a wire cut prop uh, with a loud siren and a uh, countdown timer, programmable down, countdown timer with a blue display, and I'll light it up and give you a demonstration in just a second. Uh, this, this video is going to serve uh, as a demonstration video and as uh, a video manual. Its functionality is very, its functions are very simple. You'll notice that there are six wires: one, two, like a flower almost, three, four, five, six, and they plug directly into the. Uh, board headers. There's, uh, they're labeled one through six. There are also terminal blocks that match each of those outputs so that you can use your own wires if you don't want to use these plug-in wires. Now, uh, what we do is we program in our timer the duration of the game. If the timer runs out before someone plucks the right wire, the alarm goes off. If uh, you shake the timer, or you shake the prop, um, the countdown timer starts going down 10 times as fast. You can disable that by removing this jumper. Um, you can remove that, that option. Um, you program in which wire you want to be the deactivation wire. All other wires cause an immediate trigger of the alarm. Once the alarm is triggered, it stays on for an absolute minimum of five seconds, at which point the LED will turn off and you can disarm it by pressing the cell button. So let me just give you a quick look at the main board. The siren plugs into the board via a two-pin header. Uh, the header uh, pins are labeled S plus and S minus. The S plus pin is where you connect your red wire, and your S minus is where you connect your black wire. If you uh, if you mix those two up and the siren is activated, it's going to potentially damage the siren. So make absolutely certain that you have that plugged in properly. I've got the countdown timer plugged in by a four-wire header right here. Uh, I'll talk about the connections in the product listing. Uh, but each of these wires, as you can see, is connected to a two-pin header. I can plug it back in. And once you power it up, if all of those connections are not properly made, uh, uh, what's going to happen is the red LED is going to blink. And it's, that's basically telling you, okay, we're just about ready to go, but you don't have made all of your connections properly. Again, so this is uh, wire one. If I don't want to use this wire, I can literally just remove it and use uh, any kind of wire and screw between these two terminals to substitute for this wire just in case you want to customize your prop further I make the electronics you make the you mount the prop you make it your own uh, in any case let's go through a uh, quick demonstration there's an onboard buzzer this is your control button if you want you can uh, easily Pro, uh, wire in another button in parallel if you don't like the onboard button if you want a better access um, it's powered uh, from 9 to 12 volts DC. The circuitry is controlled via 5 volts from this, that's regulated down to this, uh, to 5 volts via this 7805 5 volt regulator. Um, the relay is controlled, the siren is controlled via this relay. Enough, enough talk, let me give you a demonstration. This is your power supply terminal block right here. Right next to the cell button, the select button, there's a lead called V plus and a lead called GND for ground. You want to use 9 to 12 volts DC. I've got 9 volts currently on um, on the V plus line and I've got my supply ground on the GND line. So again if you have a battery your positive goes to V plus your negative goes to GND. So as soon as they power up the the display will power up at least the the rightmost digit the least significant digit the second digit and uh, What's going to happen on the board is if I've made all of my wire connections properly, the green LED will flash saying, "Okay, we're ready to program wire." If I haven't, pro if I have one of the one of the wires missing, the red wire, the red LED will blink until uh, until I've made that connection. So I'm going to power it up. Now I can now I can choose between programming the countdown timer or program programming in which wire. We're going to have to do both. So I'm going to start with programming the wire. Uh, the wire I choose will be the only wire that deactivates the system. So if I press and hold the cell button and I continue to hold it, it's going to blink once and then there's going to be a short delay. Then it's going to blink twice and then there's going to be a short delay. Then three times, short delay four times, short delay five times, short delay six times. And then it'll reset back to one time. Now at, at any point if I let go, 
during that blink sequence, it chooses the wire. So if I let go during the first blink, I've chosen wire one. If I've let go during the, the sequence where it blinks twice, I've chosen wire two. And I'm just going to show you now. So one, two, three, four. I've chosen, I've chosen wire five. So wire five is right here. It's the white wire. So now I'm going to program in my timer. In order to increment the timer, I have to tap this button. So I'm going to, I'm going to program in a time of five minutes and 55 seconds. So, so tap one, two, three, four, five. Hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it. One, two, three, four, five. Hold it. And lastly, hold it. Now, I'm ready to start. The board is ready. The main board is ready. Now the countdown timer is ready. So I just have to press this button one more time and we are in game mode. Five minutes and 55 seconds, counting down. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see the countdown timer in this light. Pardon me, it, it actually, the human eye picks it up really well, but the camera sometimes makes it look a little bit fuzzy. In any case, it does look great. So if I shake the prop, this little vibration sensor will, will tell the, the, the chip, okay, someone's tampering with the system, and the countdown timer will start counting down 10 times as fast. If you, if you find that to be irritating, just remove this jumper, and that function will no longer exist. So, I programmed in wire 5. Just for, a sing just for our first demonstration, I'm going to show you that this is the wire that deactivates it. I'm going to pull wire 5. So, that little, uh, what I've got on here is the, uh, the buzzers, uh, not, not really loud, but uh, uh, loud enough for people to hear it. And I've got the little seal on the top to show that it's new. You just have to remove that seal. So now, everything's been deactivated. The countdown timer reset, and now the indicator LED is blinking. Why is that? Because I haven't made all of my proper connections. I'm, I'm missing the wire 5 connection. So, plug it back in and the green LED flash is saying we're ready to start again. So I'm going to program in wire 3. I programmed in wire 3. We hear the beep saying, okay, the board's ready. I'm going to program in 10 seconds, just for the sake of programming in 10 seconds. So, it's counting down. No one's gotten to the prop yet. We've got 5 seconds, and I'm going to cover the alarm because it's really loud. Now, if you were watching the board, what you might have noticed is that the as soon as the siren goes on, the indicator LED turns on for one second, or five seconds, sorry, then turns off. During that five seconds, you can't deactivate the alarm. It's designed that way so that no one can say, oh, they lost the game, and, and quickly unplug it. I, want, I designed it so that if you pluck the wrong wire, the countdown timer runs out, you need, you know, there has, it has to be on for at least five seconds so that people can hear it. So, I'll do that again, ten seconds. I'll just choose wire one. So watch the red LED. During that time, if I press the cell button, nothing will happen. Until that LED turns off, I can't turn the siren off. So that is how you deactivate it. Once the siren is once the siren's blaring, after that LED goes out, you have to press the cell button. It deactivates the system. So I'll pull the wrong wire this time program in one minute. I'll program in wire two. So I'm going to pull wire one, which is blue. And I'm going to press the cell button to deactivate it. So that's pretty much it. It is a and again, the red LED is flashing because I haven't made all of my connections. And there we go. Ready to start again. It's really, really easy to use. You customize it. Uh, the, the mine cutter itself has several mounting holes, that, uh, wide mounting holes for easy mounting to your prop. The uh, siren has a double-sided tape layer and it literally sticks 
quite well to almost anything. And it also has two, um, two mounting holes. And the timer board has four mounting holes, one on each corner. Fits well with an M3 screw. So that's that. I hope if, if, you, if you have any questions, you can refer to the listing when I have it up for sale at uh, paintballprops.com and engineeringshot.com. I'll place the links down below. Uh, if you haven't checked us out yet, we have a neat site. Uh, check us out at paintballprops.com. We have lots of new stuff coming out. Several new props, actually. Lots of new laser tag props coming out, actually. So um, thanks for your patience. I hope that you found this product interesting, even if I tend to stutter a little bit. Thanks for your time, everyone.